Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna share with you how you can implement a loading circle using shaders, just like what you see here on the screen. Believe it or not, this is very, very simple and I wanna share with you how you can implement it in your game or in your game engine. So let's begin. All right guys, so I'm gonna use this app called uh, Code Life and I am gonna be using uh, the metal shading language. Um, don't mind that I am using that language. Um, the concept that I'm gonna share with you will apply you know, whenever you are using OpenGL shading language as well. Uh, so don't mind the language, just focus on the idea, on the concept, all right? So how can we create a loading circle uh, using shaders? Well, what you need to uh, realize is that uh, you are going to need uh, two functions. Um, one is the sine distance function of a circle and the other one is the sine distance function of a line. And why do we use sine distance function? Well, um, that is how you can create shapes using shaders. All right, so um, I am gonna show you the two functions that I'm talking about. This is the sine distance function of the circle and this is of the line. I am not going to derive them in this video because it will take a long time. However, I'm gonna share with you some articles and some videos that will help you understand how they work. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we are going to create a circle using that sine distance function. All right, so step number one, create a circle, all right? So I'm going to create a circle here and I'm gonna call that function SDF circle, and I'm going to provide the point, and then I'm going to basically um, center it, and then I'm going to provide a radius, right? Now, if I were to render this, look what you know uh, you will get. Color float three, see? We, we will get something like that. Obviously, that is not something that we want. Uh, we wanted something that is more sharp. So um, you can use uh, the step function, something like this. Um, step 0.1, C, and that will sharpen everything for you. However, um, I like to use this other function that I found, which is very, very cool, and I really like it a lot. I actually have it here as well. It's called sharpen. Um, and basically, um, let's provide that. I provide how much sharp I need it or I want the circle to be, and then I provide the resolution. And that gives me something nice, really nice actually. All right, so now we have created a circle. The second step is to create a line, all right? So let me go over here and just say a step number two, create a line. So float L, uh, SDF, line, um, that's the sign distance function of the line. And for this, I'm gonna pass the ST, the point, and then I'm going to provide the two endpoints of the segment of the line, basically. So the first starting point, I want it to be at zero, zero. And the end point, I want it to be somewhere at around um, 0 0.6, all right? I uh, forgot it, on parentheses. All right, so now if I were to render this out again, uh, what I would get is something like this. Um, and obviously that is not exactly what we want. We want this to, to be a little bit more sharp. More sharp. Um, so it's gonna be sharpen L uniform that resolution. And we get something like that, right? Um, now, guess what? Here's the trick, all right? Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, basically find the intercept between the circle and the line. If I were to render both the circles and the line, um, I would get something like this. Um, let me just show you here. Color um, equals um, float three L plus C. I will get something like that. However, I do not want that. I want to get the intersection, and to get the interception, um, you're going to I'm going to use the minimum function. So the min between L and C. All right. So that's the intersection. And you'll be wondering, well, how is that a loading circle, right? 
Uh, well, I just wanted to show you the trick. We are going to find the intersection between the circle and the lines that we're going to render. All right, so our step now is I'm going to remove this and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a line and I'm going to rotate them. That space. All right, so I'm going to create a for loop in i equals to zero. I is less than 15, uh, I plus plus. And then what I'm going to do is basically, I'm going to rotate the lines by 24 degrees, all right? Um, but here's something that you need to keep in mind. When you are working with shaders, you do not rotate the shape or the object, you rotate the space, all right? So you, so you need to transform the space where the object resides, all right? So uh, to do that, I'm gonna make a copy of my space. Uh, and I'm gonna call it flow to st2, and I'm just gonna copy it. Um, that's my orig original space. Uh, and then what I'm gonna do, I'm going to rotate the space, right? And to do that, I'm going to basically transform it using this function that I have here rotate 2D, which basically returns a matrix. And I'm basically going to transform the point by this matrix, all right? So rotate the space by 24 degrees. And to do this, I'm gonna do SD2 equals SD2, that's the point, and I'm going to rotate it or transform it, rotate 2D, by the, uh, by the matrix that is provided by this function. Um, and this will be I times 24 uh, times uh, M pi 0 0.0 and cross, cross parentheses. Um, M pi um, is basically equals to 3.14, blah, 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 right? So now we have rotated that space. At this point, we can actually create our line. All right, so now we're gonna go create a line um, with the current space. And what I'm gonna do here is gonna be float L equals um, SDF line and SD2, that's the new space. Um, then I'm gonna provide the starting point of the line, which is gonna be zero, zero and then the uh, end point, which is gonna be uh, 0, 0.0 and 0, 0.6, all right? Okay, cool. And then I'm gonna sharpen the line. L equals sharpen. All right. Now at this point, um, I'm going to um, store all of that um, in this variable. So in this for loop, right, we are going in and rotating the line, but I want to store all of the accumulation in one variable. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do float m uh, equals 0, 0, 0.0, and then I'm going to store that. So m, l. All right, so I'm gonna show you what happens if I would render the value of M right now? So if I do color equals float 3M, that's something, that is what you will get, right? And if I would um, also um, include the circle, I would get something like that, right? But remember that I told you that what we want is actually the intersection uh, between the lines and the circle? Well, that's what we're looking for, right? So what we can do here, um, is here um, we can do something blah blah then min between L and the circle and if I will render this again guess what I get we get something like that all right so now the next step is to um, ch change the intensity of the circle uh, and to do that we're going to get the angle be, uh, between the y and the x coordinate, between the x and the y coordinate of the particular point that we are operating on. And then we're gonna use the modulus 
function uh, to make it periodic. All right, so um, this may seem confusing to explain, but it makes uh, but it will make sense once you see it. So first of all, I'm gonna get the angle. All right, and to get the angle, I'm gonna go do the tan inverse. of the y and the x component all right um i think i made a mistake oh a tan there you go all right now what i'm going to do here is i'm going to basically uh, make a rotation and just watch what i'm going to do I'll do a then i'm going to get the modulus um, and I'm going to apply time because I want it, I want this to move um, plus 0 0.5 times a divided by m pi right and if I were to show you what this does then it will do something like that, all right? So what we're gonna do is we're going to get the value of A and we're going to multiply it times the value of M, all right? So remember that we're gonna get this value here, M, right? So what we want is we want M, A, and if I were to, again, you know, show you what we get, we get something like that. And that is exactly what we're looking for. All right, so now obviously you want to uh, apply this to a starting scene or something like that. And obviously you're gonna have a texture, right? So how do you mix them both? Well, that is very simple. Uh, let me just show you how to do that. So let me just um, render my texture here. Uh, so let's call it float for uh, my texture and texture zero that sample um, zero. all right um, obviously um, you may be using OpenGL uh, and how you will sample that texture is going to look very different than how you do it in metal. All right, so now I have my texture here, and then what I'm going to do is I'm basically just going to um, combine M and F, um, M and my texture. All right, so how you do that is going to be let me do this float for final color, and then I'm going to do max between um, my texture and M, all right, and then I'm going to render final color. And there you go. Obviously now the circle is way too big for your texture, so we need to scale it, scale it down. Um, and how you do that would be ST uh, times three. I made it small now, and then let me just bring it down. And there you have it. And that's how you can. Um, that's how you can implement a loading circle using shaders. Now, um, let me know if you like this type of videos, guys. Um, I've been learning shaders myself, uh, and I've been uh, implementing some examples in my game engine. And if you like these videos, I will be. I would be more than happy to share what I have learned with you. Um, so let me know if you like this type of videos. As a matter of fact, um, like two days ago, I was watching this uh, video on um, a, F a FIFA game basically, and I saw how they were doing, um, how they were rendering the lines on top of the field. And I got very curious on how to do that. So what I did, um, I you know realized that what they were doing was very simple. Uh, and basically, uh, I tried to do it myself. I wrote simple code. Again, it's very simple. Um, and I was able to uh, 
you know, emulate what they were doing. And once I figured this out, I copied the same idea onto the demo that I'm doing for my game engine. So if you like this type of, of, of videos, uh, let me know. Um, I hope you found this interesting and useful. Um, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do so right now, as well as my Twitch channel. And if you are a new indie game engine developer, please subscribe to or join my Discord server. We are, you know, a group of um, uh, indie uh, game engine developers um, that we like to share and provide tips. So if you are planning to develop your own game engine, you are more than welcome to join us. Thank you guys, and I'll see you next time.